Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cook's Kitchen. Today we're going to look at some ETFs. Some new, some old, some some that are just interesting. And then how I use them as sort of a uh, an overlay on my formal screening process for stocks. Um, this is uh, ETFtrends.com which is a fun place to look to see what the latest ETFs are. They've got uh, some writers here. We'll, we'll look at themes of new T ETFs and, um, you know, so you can see what's happening. Global X launching a bunch of ETFs. They've got two new thematic growth ETFs. Um, Janice Henderson doing some uh, sustainable ETFs there. Uh, you know, the, the, look at the, the space images here. Obviously people, everybody wants to get in on the, uh, the, the space theme. Um, what else was interesting here? Oh, I like this, uh, micro sectors. I've never owned an ETF by them, but, uh, they've got some fang innovation ETNs that, <laughs> that they call bulls and bears. Um, you know, they, they get to have a lot of fun with, uh, these ETF tickers. All right, uh, there's a boat ETF for her global shipping. <laughs> I, I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised. All right, so let's, uh, we'll, we'll jump into that. I just want to show you real quick. You want to you wanna know how many ETFs have been launched this year? I can't even count. This is 2021. This is from uh, ETF.com. There's got to be, it looks like there's at least five a week. And going back to the beginning of the year, there must be over 100 new ETFs this year. Oh, my gosh. Let's keep scrolling here. It could be 200. Just crazy. Um, you know, there's money in it. It also drives the bull market somewhat, too. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to look at a cannabis ETF. We're going to look at a uranium ETF. Uh, we're going to look at a value ETF, a cybersecurity one, uh, 5G uh, first. Let's check in. Last week, I want to just want to recap because we got retail sales this morning, blew it out. Remember last week, I looked at the possibility of a September swoon, and the market has been grinding down. That's for sure. I mean, you know, even since I did this uh, last week, let's just take a look at the NASDAQ. Look at gold gapping down here on the strong retail sales. That's interesting. And here's the NASDAQ. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Look at this, uh, all these failed mor morning rallies, right? A little bit of optimism, buyers in the morning and lower. Gap up, uh, close barely red. Gap up again, close barely red. And, you know, so the the, the S&P is almost to its 50-day. You know, it's, it's trying to kiss it, but I think we dropped through there, all right? And uh, I showed you the targets last week. I just want to revisit that because when I talked about S&P 5000 on deck, which is where I think we're headed by the end of the year. Um, I'd like to see a trip to S and P 4,200 first and get to buy it there. Um, so I don't think we get a full 10% correction down here to the 200 day moving average. This is the chart. Um, this is a presentation I did for Zach's ultimate members, uh, early in the month and looked at the possibilities. 10% correction would take you down to the 200 day moving average and these May lows, which are like, you know, call it 4050 on the s and I don't think we get there. Um, I think there's going to be plenty of buyers, 4,300 to 4,200. Um, you got this nice ledge of support there. But speaking of retail sales, the one thing that I also showed you last week was um, I took a look at uh, uh, Jerry Castellini from Castle Arc and his view of the, the duration of this expansion on the backs of strong consumers with uh, pent up demand. They've cleaned up their balance sheets. They've got money to spend. And, you know, that's what we're seeing with this surprise retail sales. Even after uh, Morgan Stanley and Goldman took down their Q3 GDP estimates and, and look at the, you know, the consumer retail focused companies here, RH, Williams, Sonoma, Nike, Lulu, Dix, Kohl's, uh, Camping World, Signet Jewelers. So we, uh, you know, these, what do these 13, 14 companies have in common? Their earnings estimates are all up and to the right. And uh, here was another interesting graph I showed you of the gap between uh, total spending and total income uh, that continue to, can you, continues to bode well and the consumer is just on fire. All right, let's get to our ETF. So first, uh, I'm going to use ETF.com to look at the ETFs. Um, 
And so here's cannabis from CNBS, from the Amplify Seymour Cannabis ETF. Just scroll down real quick here and look at the holdings. Um, I like to look at the holdings because it might give me some ideas. There's, you hear about a hot ETF, there's no reason to rush out and buy it. Look at the holdings first, and maybe you just want to buy the individual companies. What stood out to me here, though, is what what they're 20% in the U.S. dollar and they have 14% in a, uh, a Dreyfus, uh, you know, like a money market fund or a cash management fund. I thought that was crazy. So right away, I emailed um, our ETF expert here, uh, Nita Mishra. She's actually out of town, but she, she got back to me that, you know, um, you may not always get the most accurate holding. So you want to go to the fund sponsor. When in doubt, when you have questions, go to the fund sponsor. And so Amplify, you can see all the holdings in the cannabis ETF. And down at the bottom here, it says their cash is only 3.9%. So something was missed, you know, ETF.com, a lot of these uh, ETF databases, they do a great job, but, you know, sometimes they could have some bad data. So here you can see all the holdings and the weightings uh, in the cannabis ETF. Um, real quick, I wanted to talk about uh, stock screen. I said this was an overlay you know, looking at what's in an ETF to give me new ideas. What's what's holding up an ETF? What's leading it? But generally, um, on Zach.com, we have a ton of preset screens for just about anything you want to look at in terms of value or growth or momentum, uh, combining value, growth, and momentum in, in a sort of composite uh, best fit score, income stocks, market cap. If you're bearish, uh, we've got some bonus screens. You can access all these screens on Zaxx.com, um, and I, I think the the premium membership is super affordable and what you get with it. Uh, but again, so we're doing fundamental quantitative screening based on earnings momentum. Um, when I'm looking at ETFs, I'm just getting new ideas. All right, so let's. Uh, so that was cannabis. Let's look at um, let's look at uranium. I think this is a global X ETF. Um, let's see, URA. Yeah, this is a global X uranium ETF. Um, Dave Bartosiak sort of put this on my radar. He did a thing last week on uranium stocks. And then my son called me over the weekend and told me he owns like three uh, uranium stocks that are in this ETF. So let's just scroll down and look at the holdings. So here are the top holdings. Uh, Cameco Corporation, about 50% of this ETF are Canadian companies. And, you know, the Canadians are the miners. And I, I think that there's there's probably some crossover that if the gold guys find uranium, you know, it's a, an extra source of income for them or they sell those rights. Um, but my son owns Denison Mines, which is, you know, basically a penny stock. And then he also bought uh, some Cameco at a good level. Uh, let's look at those charts real quick. So I think... Uh, uh, Denison is DNN. So my son scooped this at like a dollar twelve or something. Just good timing. You know what? The Wall Street bets crowd is all over the uranium stocks. So if you're listening, you know who you are. Um, and uh, boy, but you're looking at this thing long term. You get above a buck eighty. Um, you know it has some it has some potential here. Uh, Denison is just revenues are real low, but it, you know. The market cap's not that big either. The big player here is, uh, I think it's CCJ. I got that right. Yeah, there's Cameco. So um, that's 22% of the uranium ETF. Um, he also got in here like 17, 18 bucks. So whatever the whatever the Wall Street bets crowd was doing on Reddit, uh, their timing was good. And you see the volume pouring in here as the crowd jumps in to uranium stocks. So that's interesting. All right, let's look at what else did I say? Oh, let's look at uh, cybersecurity because this is a, a relatively new one. Uh, bug, we all know hack, but I thought I'd you know, you know, why does somebody issue a new ETF? Well, the provider, you know, it, it's their business, right? So Global X makes money um, creating and managing ETFs. Uh, so let's see what's in bug, and I'm, you know. It's going to be a lot of the same holdings that are in Hack. What's the difference? Well, for some people, Hack might be trading 65 bucks, and Bug is trading 31 or 32. So maybe your cash allocation 
to the same level of risk. But you want to look inside, too, and see this is uh, clearly um, it's not equal weighted. Um, I, I can't remember if hack is or not. So you've got the big weights, 60 percent of them in the top 10 holdings, Fortinet, CrowdStrike, Zscaler, CyberArk, Okta. Oh, I just did a bear of, bear of the day report today on Okta only because, you know, uh, estimates might be troughing, uh, but it it's a, it's a very interesting company with identity solutions for enterprises. All right, let's look at the bug chart real quick. Where's bug? Uh, how long has it been around? Uh, it's been around a little while. Uh, started late 2019. And, um, you know, it, it, it looks a lot like when I when I put in hack here, you'll see the charts almost look the same. So we go hack. You know, so obviously they, they hold the same stocks, just a different way to play it. But you but you do want to look at the weightings for each. And we're not going to look at hack right now. But now you know how. All right, let's uh, let's look at value just because I did a great interview with the folks from Emless Advisors last week. Um, and they have the Emless Alpha Opportunities ETF, EOPS. But I'm actually going to show you their page. Here's Emless right here. Um, they've got a suite of ETFs that are pretty alternative. And so let's see what's in EOPS. It, you know, some surprising value plays. The, he's got... Uh, He's got restoration hardware in there, which is now just RH, but he's owned this thing since like $25 and uh, always adds on the dips. So that's been a big winner for him. They've got a big position in Signet Jewelers. So I did a podcast with uh, Nathan Miller, uh, the fund manager here, last week. I'll link to that in the article version of this video on Zax.com. And you can hear him talk about his approach to value. He's got uh, Children's Place, Camping World. The guy does not touch technology stocks. So when the tech bubble is going to burst, money is going to flow in a lot of these value ideas that are consumer-oriented, and, uh, and, and he'll do well. So, so I just want to show you this is a way of getting some instant exposure to some of these value consumer plays. All right, we talked about uranium. Oh, I wanted to show you one more uh, sort of a 5G play. So we'll go back here. Um, IDAT, I know, is a new one from iShares that is focused on uh, the the sort of dovetail between cloud and 5G. So let's see what's in there. You know, we've talked before about robotics ETFs or Internet of Things ETFs. Um, you know, and this is just another way to to get exposure you know if you're if you don't want to if you need if you have money you want to put in the market this is sometimes one of the best ways to do it and you you don't have single stock risk um, and you, you maintain exposure in case this market rips higher already and we don't get a 10 percent correction so idat uh it's got fortinet nvidia marvell datadog aristo microsoft taiwan semi yeah it's a you know if uh, if you want comfortable sleep at night risk and technology, you know, the, these ETFs are the way to go. All right. So covered those five ETFs I wanted to talk about. Um, again, it's just an interesting way to learn about ETFs you might want to buy or you get, you know, you get ideas when you look at the holdings and and see hey, maybe really what I want to do is just buy um, that particular stock. All right. I think I covered everything here in, uh, in our ETF trends, uh, tour whirlwind tour of, uh, interesting new ETFs. There's so many out there. You don't need to own them all. You know, a lot of them are going to perform, um, in line anyway. And that's, that's another thing you want to look at is, is, you know, compare them to the spy and the QQQ and, uh, and see, how performance has been in the past year or two. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. We'll talk to you next week.